Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. First John chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. The title of the message is, Salvation Equals No More Hell. Salvation Equals No More Hell. Salvation Equals No More Hell. And as we read our you know, text verses, you'll see why for sure. First John chapter 5, verse 10, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Verse 11, and this is a record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Verse 12, he that hath the Son has life, he that, and he that hath not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you once again for gathering us this Bible-believing church to hear your word. We ask mm-hmm. that you fill pastor with the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. given the liberty and the authority from on high to declare your word unto the hearers. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that only you can give. We ask you that you would protect us from devil's attacks. Help us not to think about the things that are happening in our lives, but help us to wholly give ourselves unto you. We ask you that you would help us to be more grateful for salvation and the passages that were just read. Help us not to doubt, but help us to be more sure and live accordingly as Christians. And for those who are not saved, those who are not sure, we ask you, Lord God, that you will convict the hearts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Pray that today will be the day of their salvation. Mm-hmm. We ask you that you will receive all the glory and honor. We just say pray. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. So salvation equals no more hell. You know, last week and I discussed on you know many churchgoers who are on their way to hell, and we know we saw some of the reasons. And this week, you know, I wanted to see and discuss and preach to you on salvation. And one of the main reasons that a lot of people don't like us, and even calls us cults. Is because we say, once saved, always saved. You know, you, you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior once, and that's it. Yes. But that's not what many of the religions out there in the world believes right now. I mean, two biggest organizations out there, Catholicism, Catholics, they don't believe once saved, always saved. Right. They say you have to go to a purgatory, right? right? And you have another religion, which is Muslim, right? Yes. I mean, their idea of paradise is, you know, having multiple virgins out there, you know. I mean, the leader was an emphatic, you know, wicked person in the True. first place. Yes. So that's already how many billions of people. And you have so many religions out there in the Eastern Asia. You have yes. Buddhism, you know, you have a Hinduism. They have all those things. Yes. And their idea of salvation is, you know, maybe this life, you live a good life, or they think about, you know, reincarnation. Right. You know, they think about, you know, having a kingdom here on earth. But that's not the salvation that's going to keep you out of hell. Right. right? If you do have biblical salvation, that's why, you know, I know the same spirit works, you know, when Brother Richard was playing this morning, you know, he prayed all of my points today, so you know, I might as well, right? I mean, you could know for sure where you're going after you die. Yeah. And that is such a, how should I say, it's uh, almost become a mysterious, you know, idea this day and age. 
if you're talking to any regular person, you know, just a regular church goer, even just someone who doesn't go to church or who's not even religious, you ask him, like, do you know for sure you go to heaven after you die? And a lot of times people, they'll just say, I think so. Yeah. You know, I try to live a good life, right? But if that's your testimony, you know, you're straight on your way to hell. Amen. Simple as that. But Bible, you know, verse 13 is like one of my favorite verses in the Word of God. 1 John 5, 13. 12 and 13, he that hath the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. It's so simple. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you have eternal life. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of Son of God. So always the question is, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and Him alone to save you from hell? If your answer is yes, the Bible says that He may know that He have eternal life and that He may believe in the name of the Son of God. We have the perfect proof. We have the final authority. We have the best evidence in the whole universe, which is the Word of God. Amen. Word of God says you're saved. What more do you have to question or ask? But this is where the trouble lies. This is where the devil comes in. This is where the false preachers and all the you know, wicked things of the world comes in. And they ask, just like how serpent was beguiling Eve. Are you sure? You know, when someone keeps on questioning you, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure, then people start doubting, right? Especially when they don't have final authority. Think about O.J. Simpson case. He just passed away, right? All the evidence said, you know, he was the person, you know, who murdered the two people. Yes. I mean, it was, I guess, you know, civil case. They finally got it right. But the criminal case, you know, everybody, every evidence pointed towards him. But his defense team just kept on saying, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure? Bloods were everywhere, you know. I mean, I still remember, I think, I was going to school that time, and everything stopped. The whole school stopped. And then we went on to our regular TV. It was a box, you know, it wasn't a you know, flat screen, you know, 4K, 5K. No. no, it was just a box, you know, at school. And obviously, schools don't get the most funding, so you have to kind of click it, those yeah. click, you know, TVs. And then it was like Channel 11 or something, and then we see this Ford Bronco driving, and then everybody stopped and watched on the, you know, TV screen and say, oh, that's O.J. Simpson. You know, driving, I you know, he had some, some guy who was driving for him, and he was going through all the places. And after everything, you know, and then he, he was found innocent, and then you tend to think, okay, if you tell somebody that you're not saved long enough, they might believe it, right? Yeah. When people are believing things when the murders go scot-free, right? Yeah. But as Christians, you should never, ever doubt your salvation if you did that right once. Yeah. See? Christ died for you and I just once. Yes. He doesn't have to die for us every single day or every single week. No. It's like if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, it's like you're saying that he died for me multiple, multiple times. You know, he only died for you and me just once. And then many times people get start confusing and it's not real to them. And then one of the reasons is that because people still, you know, don't have the right idea about hell. Billy Graham did a lot of damage. He did great things earlier in his life. But later in his life, he compromised and did a lot of damage. He just said hell is separation from God, right? That's not it. No. Hell is eternal torment of fire. Yes. What he said is the same thing as what popes are saying. Yes. Yeah. They have the same viewpoint. Yeah. And then you tell me that, oh, you know, he was the same old great preacher in his, you know, I mean, during the 40s and 50s, later in his life. I mean, this is actually somewhere in the YouTube, if you find out. I mean, it was dated like 18, 1983. So it was, he was far gone already. Yes. When people hear that hell is just separation from God, hell is just grave, right? All these new Bible 
you know, translators, you know, when it comes to such a strong words where God inspired people to, you know, say hell is hell, right? They start transliterating. What does that mean? They just bring the word back. They're like, oh, Greek and Hebrew, you know, it says Hades and Sheor. And like, I mean, does it have a right impact? You know, no. hey, sister, you know, don't burn in Hades. Don't burn in Sheor, right? But if I tell you, hey, don't burn in hell, then you get angry. Yeah. You know, something like grows in you, right? There's reason. And Jesus Christ, we're talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what verse he used most during his ministry out of Old Testament? It was from Isaiah chapter 66. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. If our Lord used it the most, you know, during his ministry, then you know it's an important verse. Then who's going to try to change it? Who's going to try to eliminate it? Obviously the devil. Isaiah 66, we'll start looking at from 22, but 24 is the verse. Isaiah 66, verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, said the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. Verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die. You know, in hell, you're going to turn into your father-like figure, which is serpentine. You're going to turn into a worm because your father is the devil, according to John 8, 44, if you haven't trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Neither shall their fire be quenched. You know, fire is eternal. Don't think that hell, you have like kind of an intermission and then you, after a million years, you get to go out and have a second chance. No, no. there's no second chance. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. And that's such a strong verse about hell. But new versions, I mean, literally new versions took those verses out right out of the Bible. Let's go to book of Mark. Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9. I mean, aren't you glad? I mean, you and I should be ashamed for not thanking God enough because he died for us and he saved us from this hell, eternal lake of fire. I mean, can you imagine if you and I, for even for a second, one minute, were to burn in that lake of fire? I mean, this is a, you say this stupid question, right? If there is a burning, you know, literal furnace out there, are you going to go there and touch it? No. Just to see how hot it is, right? I mean, if there's a sun right in front of you, 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit, are you, I want to see how hot sun is. So you're going to go and touch it? No, you're going to run away from it as far away as you can from the heat. Yes. Mark chapter 9, verse 46 the Bible says, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Verse 48, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Why would new versions get rid of these verses? Very subtly, you know. Sneaky, sneaky, right? They're like, oh, there are other verses there, but why are you making Jesus Christ a liar, right? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Jesus Christ said it in Matthew 24, verse 35. But right off the bat, you took those two verses out, right? Yeah. Why? Because the devil and the translators don't want that verse. No. They don't like that verse right. because that's their destination. If you reject Jesus Christ, that's your destination. Yes. Fire won't be quenched once you're in hell. Only way it will be quenched is... If God disappears, but God is eternal, Amen. then hell is eternal. Yes. Why would you even take chance? Right? If you don't know the right gospel, and if you're not sure 100% where you're going today, then you got to make sure. Yes. There's like no if and buts, right? But if you're sure, then why would you ever be swayed, right? 
I mean, there are different reasons that we talk many times, right? Because you're living a sinful life, you know? Yes. You have the wrong doctrine, and all those reasons, yes. right? But it doesn't matter if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, once and for all, from bottom of your heart, knowing that you're a sinner, and then trusted Him alone, then whether you like it or not, you're going to go to heaven. You won't burn in hell. I mean, people are so mistaken when they tell me and, you know, say brethren when we're street preaching or doing, you know, passing out tracks. No, you are going to hell. Don't tell me I'm going to hell. I'm sorry. Bible says I can't go to hell anymore. Amen. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's simple as that. Then we could see that hell is a place of fire, place of torment, and it's eternal punishment. So it's a real place. You know, if you search the internet a lot, they're going to ask a lot of questions. Is hell a real place? Yes, it's a real place. And it's a place where people who reject Jesus Christ will burn forever. It's a place where devil and his angels are going to burn forever. Let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 32. Ezekiel chapter 32. Hell is not where there's a black hole. You know, you hear that kind of, you know, argument out there. Hell is just your figmentation of imagination. Hell is just your, you know, grave. No. Hell is a literal burning place of fire. Ezekiel 27. Ezekiel 32. Ezekiel 32. And verse 27. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. So hell is underneath. So here, hell is underneath. Right? I mean, there's a lot of scientific studies done, too, where they're saying that, you know, like center of earth, you know, their temperature is literally like the sun, you know like 9,000 degree Fahrenheit, right? Like in a liquid form, super, super hot. I mean, imagine, you die, you reject Jesus Christ, you wake up in hell, and you'll be burning forever and ever. And the Bible even has a real life case. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke 16, verse 19. So we see the rich man at Lazarus. And why is this so significant? Because it's a real, literal event. Some people say it's a parable, you know. It's not. Nowhere in the Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31, does it say it's a parable. Right. If it's a parable, Jesus Christ always says it's a parable. You know, I'll tell you a funny story, but it's sad. You know, when Dr. Ruckman was in, like, a Bob Jones University, he was in one of the classes, and this so-called professor who spoke eight languages, fluent in them, you know, started teaching, lecturing on Luke chapter 16. And then, oh, so this parable of rich man and Lazarus. Dr. Ruckman raised his hand. Professor, blah, 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 you know. It's not a parable. Where do you see parable? And then he got caught off guard, right? The professor, he started saying it again. Well, this parable of rich man, no, he raised his hand again. You know his character. It's not a parable, right? And then he made the professor kind of red in the face. So you know what they do? And you, you and I have to always be careful, especially if you're ever going to talk to someone, you know, smart Alex out there. They say, do you know Greek and Hebrew? Oh. Yeah, that's what he's like. Do you know Greek and Hebrew? And then that's when Dr. Workman, I mean, you know, you push the wrong person, right? Yeah. You know, Dr. Workman, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to know Greek and Hebrew, you know, inside <laughs> out, you know, so that if they were ever to talk to him about Greek and Hebrew. But... It's irrelevant. Amen. I'm not going to take out my Greek 
to read my Bible right now. Yeah. I'm not going to get Hebrew stuff, right? I have King James Bible, yeah. perfect word of God in plain old English. And he says, nowhere, parable. Then it's a real event. Yes. Which means rich man is still burning in hell right now. Yes. And if this is real, how can you say hell is a grave? This rich man is feeling all the pain and torment. Mm -hmm. And he has a shape. And he's, he has a, I mean, he's thirsting right now. Yeah. Right? Let's go to yeah. verse 19. The Bible says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair sumptuous every day. So, you know, whenever you see purple, you know, it's a royal symbol and people who, you know, show some wealth during those days especially. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate, full of sores. See, one thing is that Bible never says the rich man was a bad guy or anything. You know, sometimes you, you like assume things, right? I mean, as a Bible believer, but as just a human being, you know, you and I should never assume, yes. right? And especially when you start assuming, that's when gossip start. That's when you start hurting, you know, each other's feelings, right? Yes. And then, you know, when you start misunderstanding other party, then that turns into bitterness. And then if bitterness is, you know, the devil's greatest weapon inside the church, to pit brethren against each other, who won't speak to each other for like 20 years, you know. It's a lot of cases are like that. So, we're, I mean, no, we don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy, right? But we just know that he's burning in hell because he didn't get saved according to God's plan, yeah. right? So, and we're not talking about Calvinism here either because all those start coming in. Right? You and I have free will. For yes. whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know? We have to think of free will. Right? So one of the reasons salvation does not equal no more hell to many religions is because of doctrines like Calvinism. You never know if you're one of the chosen. That's why you just have to do good works and try and try. Right? What comes out of being trying and trying and trying? You will never have 100% assurance, right. right? I want to be the best son that I can be. I'm going to try and try. Do you think you've been the best son? Were you 24-7, you know, faithful, obedient to your father? Then to me, you're not best son, yeah. right? Because you broke the rules. People don't realize that if you break one law, if you commit one sin, you're, a, you're going to burn in hell. Yes. Same as someone who broke thousands of law. Amen. Simple as that. And then we'll get into how you could have assurance, but let's continue. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, wherever the dogs came and licked his sores. Let's go to verse 23. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So in hell, one of the things that you will miss most is the mercy of God. There's no mercy in hell. I mean, God's shown great mercy right now in this age, right? You and I got saved because of God's mercy and His grace. But in hell, there's no more mercy. I mean, this 10-year-old kid, you know, who rejected Christ, you know, got into a car accident, you know, that kid will be burning in hell. Yes. For us, like, our human feelings will be like, oh, such a little kid, you know. But in hell, God's fair God. You rejected right. my son as your Lord and Savior. You burn eternally. Yes. No mercy. You know, in the hands of no mercy, whether it's God or anybody, that's a scary place to be. Yes. Right? So once you're in hell, it's eternal. 
And you can never come back and say, oh, you know, that's not the God I want to believe, right? God showed his love at Calvary. Thank you, Lord. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. It's past tense. Yes. God himself died on the cross, shedding his precious blood for an enemy like you and me. Amen. What more love do you need? Right. right? Do you need more love than the life? I mean, that's beyond my comprehension. Someone died for you because they loved you. Yes. What more do you need? No greater. Do you, do you need them to do, show something else? Right. You know, after the death? No one will, in the right mind, will say yes, right? <laughs> then why do you reject this great love and always complain about, oh, the Bible talks about this eternal place of torment, hell, Lake of fire, right? Yes. So I can't believe that book. It doesn't matter. It's non-sequential. It doesn't matter what you think. Yes. Because God says, let God be true, but every man a liar. Amen. Your excuse will never fly at the white throne judgment. That's it. Let's go to John, I mean, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. So as I set up, you know, the points on assurance, security equals no more hell. Let's just look at all the excuses that people are going to bring up. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Don't ever think that you have justification for not trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Verse 4, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins and mightest overcome when thou art judged. God has shown his greatest love for you once and for all. Yes. Because of your selfish whatever reasons you reject him, then don't ever think that you have any justification. Verse 5, But if our unrighteousness command the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. It's like, so, if God sends lost soul to hell because they rejected Christ, is God the villain? No. No. I mean, he already has done everything. Why would you spit on God's face and say, that's not enough? I have to do something additional on my own. Verse 6, God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? It's God's holy, just, fair at the white throne judgment. You know, everybody's going to everybody's gonna be a liar. Yes. Yeah. They're going to bring out their best excuses in the whole world. And God's going to just play their life. Like, oh, you had a chance to receive me. You know that Sunday? You know that Friday? You know, you know that Tuesday? You know, when one of my child went to you and preached to you or tried to give a tract to you? You said, I don't need it. Yeah. When you try to talk to you about heaven and hell, they're like, no, I don't believe in God. I would never believe in God who sends someone to hell eternally, burning there. Amen. A lot of people, they're just going to be cursing and cursing. And they're just going to be regretting for all eternity in lake of fire. Then why is many Christians worry about burning in hell? When? You should be constantly thanking God for salvation. Yes. Well, again, I mentioned because of wrong Bible, wrong doctrine. That's it. And maybe because of sins in your life. And then number one, why you and I could know that, you know, salvation equals no more hell once and for all, is because of our body structure. Number one. We have body Soul and spirit. 
A lot of people don't even know we have three parts, right? You know, like, they combine soul and spirit into one in a lot of the new translations. Yeah. So when I tell people, hey, you know, don't burn in hell, you know, yeah, your soul, right? You know, need to go to heaven. Yes. Like, oh, yeah, 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 my spirit will go to heaven. I mean, that's correct. But I'm not talking about your spirit, you know. We're talking about your soul, right? Because of a lot of new versions, people don't even know the right, you know, balance. They don't know the right division in a human being. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. So if you know yourself, that you are a tripartite being, you know, human in three places or three divisions, then you should never worry about burning in hell if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So our flesh, right, will just turn to, you know, dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Oh, Bible says there's such thing as a soul. A lot of people think that, oh, yeah, yeah, spirit, spirit, spirit. No. You and I have body, soul, and spirit. So we have a soul which is eternal. You have a soul which is eternal, which will be in heaven, or we'll be in hell forever. Because our flesh will just go back to the ground. That's it. I mean, we get to know more of this because why? You know, in the past, even Solomon didn't really know, right? But after Bible was completed and Pauline epistle and everything, now we get to know more, right? Yes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. So let's see Ecclesiastes. That's what Solomon say. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And this is, you know, in Ecclesiastes, you could answer, you know, some of the questions that people commonly ask you. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So, you know, our flesh will just go back to the ground. Let's go to chapter 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Let's look at verse 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts, even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man has no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go unto one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. I mean, yeah, I mean, our flesh, animal's flesh, it just goes to the ground. 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? So the spirit of man goes upward, and the spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth. You know, you know, we definitely, I have a dog, and you know, I want to see my dog in heaven, but that's not it. Animals don't have souls, right? Yeah? But we have soul. That's why we're different. And how, how in the world can you have an assurance of salvation if you don't understand three parts of you? In the Old Testament, when their flesh sinned or their physical body sinned, their soul sinned together. They're stuck together. In the New Testament, I know after Christ died and ascended up to heaven, how can we have assurance? Because when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, your body and soul separates once and for all. Amen. That's why that's the greatest perfect salvation. Yes. That's why, God forbid, you know, I don't want any of our people to, you know, or even hearing, take it out of context. I mean, I could be so angry, lose my control, emotional control, 
and I could murder someone. Right. Does that mean that I'm going to burn in hell? No. No. Because my soul is white as snow. Amen. It's clean. Once and for all. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. That's why this church age salvation equals no more hell. Woo! It's perfect salvation. Right? Only now. And our body will finally see the redemption when rapture happens. Yes. But before that, you and I, our soul is white as snow. It's clean. I mean, of course, and smart aleck people say, then I could commit sin because I'm going to go to heaven. But the Bible says, God forbid. Right. right. I mean, you read what you sow still. Colossians 2, verse 11. It's so one of the verses that everyone should memorize and should have highlighted on your Bible. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the what? Circumcision of Christ. If you know the definition of circumcision, it's separated once and for all, yes. right? Your body and soul separated once and for all when you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior. I mean, that's why you want to go to hell, save Christian. You can't. Yeah. You can't. I mean, that's the greatest blessing and that's the greatest assurance you and I could ever have. Yes. Then why do you doubt your salvation? Right? Maybe you haven't studied the right Bible. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know the right doctrine. Now you know, right? You have the right word of God, King James Bible. Yes. And he clearly tells you that your body and soul separated when you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, you should, what you should do as a saved Christian, you should go out there and lead as many souls to the Lord. Amen. Who's on their way to hell. And lead the Christians who's, you know, blinded by the wrong doctrines of the world, wrong Bibles of the world. You got to lead them to the right path. That's why we're still here. You and I have a purpose, right? We're not just here to just enjoy life, you know, come to church, meet people, go fishing, and that's it. No, you got to go out there and preach the word in season, out of season. Yes, sir. And this is one of the greatest, you know, doctrine that people just don't know about. Obviously, I didn't know until I came to our church. No one showed me. No one even opened the Bible, the other church that I used to go to. All we did was a praise and worship, you know, 24-7, and then do a sinner's prayer at the end, not knowing what you're even doing, right? But as a Bible believer, if you know the truth, if you know the right doctrine, it's least that we could do. And then second reason, you know, our salvation is perfect and no more hell is one of the prayers, right? We, we pray. Right? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Because we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Because you and I are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's it. One more. I mean, people try so much thing, so many things trying to receive the Holy Spirit, right? This day and age. They got to speak in tongues. They got to see Christ in vision, right? They got to do like a 40 day, 40 night prayer so that, you know, Holy Spirit will come into them, right? And then they also think that you could lose Holy Spirit. Like, you know, what happened to Saul, you know, even happened to, you know, David. But wrong doctrine. Amen. Doctrines of death. Right now in church age, if you trust that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, by faith, you are still with the Holy Spirit. What does the Bible say? Spirit of promise. So let's go to verse 13. In whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So only way you could have right salvation is through the right gospel. Why? Because there are many different gospels out there. Yes. Then what's this gospel we're talking about? Remember the prayer where Richard did, right? Let's go to first. Put your hands still there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Clearly shows you the gospel of Jesus Christ that Apostle Paul preached. So if you did not get saved by this gospel of Jesus Christ, 
then you got to check. Yeah, yeah you got to go back. Amen. You can't have a gospel where it says, you know, I have to endure until the end, and I have to do good works. I have to see feelings. I have to see Jesus. You know, I have to see Mary. I have to do, you know, confession of sins. No, no, no. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So, regardless of what religion you are, if you believe in the Bible, this is a gospel you and I are supposed to preach and believe. Yes. Because this is the same gospel that Apostle Paul preached. Verse 2. By which also ye are saved. So we're saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ, through the word of God. Amen. Right? You don't get saved by hearing God's voice in your dreams. You are saved, son. You are saved, Johnny. You are saved, you know, Jane. Yes. No. You get saved by believing the gospel. The Bible says, verse 2 again, If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. But that's where majority of the whole world falls into. Yes. They believed in vain. What does that mean? They only know it in their head. Yes. They never believed it from their heart. Sometimes they're like, ah, oh, you know, that's true. What Bible says is true, but I can't trust 100%. Mm. I have to do good works, right? How can I say I'm saved if I'm not living a good Christian life? How can I say I'm saved if you know, I don't give money to the poor? Mm. How can I say I'm saved if I'm not nice to my wife or husband like before children. Yes. You know? You know why? Because that's not a condition of salvation. Thank God. Simple as that. Amen. It's not you who make up salvation plan. It's not your leaders. It's not the crooks out there. Bible says you just have to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and you're saved during this church age. Yes. I mean, you could bring up, you know, tribulation age, Old Testament age. Yeah, it's different. That's faith by works. Then continue to trust faith by works. If Lord were to come today, you get to go through great tribulation. That's right. And then you could perfectly follow that salvation plan, and then you could try to survive. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, wishing for one of the worst things, right? So during church age, God made it so simple. God made it as simple as possible for you to get saved if you just trust the word of God Amen. instead of doubting any word. Yes. Let's go to verse 3. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, again, through the word of God. You know, I mean, incorruptible word of God. Amen. And our evidence, our final authority is yes. in the word of God. If I were to tell you any other, I'm a false preacher. Yeah. Don't trust me. Yes. Don't even listen to me. But as long as it comes out of the word of God with the right doctrine, then that's the right word. Amen. And that's the right thing. Yes. Verse 4, Bible says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I mean, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus died for you and I, shedding his precious blood, was dead, buried, and raised again in three days. And if you trust him as your Lord and Savior... The Bible says you have eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. In Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, for whosoever, again, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Right? People always ask, where do I get my faith from? You know, 50 days of prayer? <laughs> the word of God. Word of God, okay? Word of God, you know? It's very dangerous that you go up to a mountain by yourself without the Bible and just start praying, you know, kneeling. And, you know, you're going to receive the devil somewhere, right? You need the Word of God, and you have the perfect Word of God. Amen. Then salvation definitely equals no more hell, right? Woo! If you do it the right way, yes. right? Don't be swayed by all these, you know, phonies out there with great speech, right? Yeah. And, and the itching, pleasing your itching ears, right? You know, don't listen to people who say, you know, hell's just imagination. 
allegory, metaphor. No, hell is a real place. Yeah. And if you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, brethren, you should never worry about hell. Amen. Use that time when you're worrying about hell. Go out there and preach the word more. Pass out word of God more. Yeah. Study the word of God more. Yeah. Instead of going to all these internet channels and looking at, oh, I gave up on faith because God's such a meanie, you know? Because he's sending people to hell, you know? And they don't know the half the truth. God yeah. is fair God. I mean, he's shown the greatest love a, any being in the world could ever show. Dying for your enemy the worst way possible, shedding his precious blood. Right? What more do you want? It's up to you to accept or reject. I'll finish with this. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. It's a gift. You don't have to do anything. I mean, that's the best thing ever. Great tribulation, Old Testament, you got to do it, right? Your faith will save you. But this one, no, not ours. We didn't have to do anything. Nothing. He did everything for us. Thank you, Lord. Now, all you have to do is just receive him as your Lord and Savior the best way you know how, believing from the bottom of your heart. Yes. Then you should never worry about burning in hell. Amen. You have that perfect salvation. Then, as Christians, we have work to do. The Lord's coming back soon, brother. Amen. Right? You know, we know the times, right? We don't know the exact time, but we know we're near the end. You know, we should stop wasting our time you know, on needless things, but to go out there, ultimately, you know, leading as many souls to the Lord as possible. Yes. Let's close our eyes. Many people... Being a churchgoer, many people heard the gospel, but many people have believed in vain. They just know it in their head. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. But God commended his love to us, and that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. All you have to do is realize you are a sinner on your way to hell. Believe that Jesus died for your sin, shedding his precious blood. And believe that he's God and accept him in your heart as your Lord and Savior with repenting heart. Just simple repentance means you're turning from your own ways and turning to the Lord. If you don't know where you're going today or if you had doubts, in this prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell. Believing that he's God and died for your sins and receive him not in your life, in your head, but in your heart and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, that's it. You know, no more. Nothing more to be included. That's how simple the salvation plan is right now in church age. And if anybody's confused, you know, if you're here, you could talk to me or talk to the brethren. If you're online, you know, reach out. You know, we definitely want people to go to heaven. You know, we don't have any enjoyment talking about hell. We do it because the Bible says to do it. Amen. I mean, Christ preached about hell more than, I mean, eight times in his ministry, more than twice a year. I mean, he referenced Isaiah 66, 24 because it's a real place, and we don't want anybody to burn in hell.